It's Metal Month at Toontrack.com. Today, we're in Easy Drummer 3, where we'll find your drum tone using primarily the drums tab, but also how it relates to the mixer tab. This video can be for any genre of music, but due to the season of Metal Month, I'll be pursuing harder, heavier drum tones. I'm Sean from Shooty School. Check out ShootySchool.com for hundreds of free videos just like this one and complete courses. Let's get started. We're on the drums tab here in Easy Drummer 3, and there's two menus I want to make sure you acknowledge and know exactly what they do. The library menu and the presets menu. The library menu helps you decide what tune track product you want to use, and they're usually segregated by genre, theme, or the room they were recorded in. And if you only bought Easy Drummer 3, you'll have three libraries, the bright room, the main room, and the tight room. After you choose a library, you then go to the preset menu and you choose presets to instantly remix your drum sounds to hopefully get you closer to your goal. The main room by default sounds fantastic. You could easily tweak that into a metal tone, but I want to use the bright room today simply because it is brighter. The EQs are typically more present to help cut through your big gainful metal mixes. And it's just themed correctly, also has the most amount of instrument slots as well. So it's the bigger library. After I selected the bright room, then I'll go and check out some presets. So now that we know what those two menus do, let me give you an example on how I would decide what library and preset I would use. So to be most productive with my time, I don't want to just select a different preset and then just click on stuff and go, oh, does that sound good? Let me try a different preset and keep clicking on things. I think it's best and most productive to go to the Grooves tab and find a groove that re remotely resembles what you might be composing that day. So let me go over to the Grooves tab. I'm going to select a couple filters just to speed up my workflow here. Normal time, open hi-hat, 4-4 four, four metal beats. This will work because I want to hear what the hi-hat sounds like mostly. The kick and snare is almost always there, but let's listen to the end see if there's a fill. There's not, and I want to hear some toms when I audition presets, so let me just go to back to type and select fill, and let me get off open hi-hat and uh, select toms here. It's a little over dramatic just for this, but I don't want to waste time. This is good enough. And now I'm going to loop this. And now we're going to be way more productive with our time hearing the main elements of the kit. And now I could just select different presets. This is also how I would, you know, choose what library I want to do. But I already know I premeditated. I want the bright room for this video today. So we're on the classic bright room preset. There's two presets I want to call attention to, which are tune track presets. Fundamental Metal and Millennium Metal, but do check all these out. I mean, we're at different strokes, different folks. We all want something different. I like these two. Here's Fundamental Metal. It's a little scooped. It's a little tighter. That might be super important depending on what your mix sounds like. Let me go over to Millennium Metal. very thunderous ambient snare compared to what we've heard so far and that kick drum has a super click high end added to it which really helps us pierce through the mixes so we can always hear that foundational kick drum so that's how i would find my libraries and my presets i would get a drum beat that represents what i'm doing and also has the instruments i'm most interested in written into that beat before i start listening to sounds because i'll work so much faster before we move on let's talk about how the drums tab and the mixer tab are very related and how they affect each other it's nice to have the drums tab open and see the you know the kit animating to your drum beat it's beautiful looking but the mixer tab is going to give you more feedback about why you're hearing what you're hearing. And depending on what preset you have selected, you're going to have a different amount of mixer channels to work with and probably a different amount of effects modules to work with. I like Millennium Metal. It gets me closer to my tone, but it actually has less features. If I change a diff to a different preset, let's say 70s Rock Boom, for example, 
Look at the channel layout. Now I have three individual mics on the kick drum as an example, and the effects are definitely different. So when you're auditioning beats, if post-production is a priority, you might want to have your mixer tab open while you audition beats and change presets instead of having the drums tab open. I want to talk about signal flow and volume so we can really better understand how signal moves through Easy Drummer 3 and so we don't paint ourselves into a corner in the future. Now, velocity or dynamics, those can inevitably control volume, but we're going to talk about those later on in Metal Month. We're just talking about simple volume knobs or faders. There's three separate places you can adjust volume in Easy Drummer 3. On the drums tab, which is the source signal, and then it comes out of there and goes to the mixer tab and then you adjust volumes there and then it comes out of there and it goes to the master fader which is behind me this is a form of gain staging where there's multiple points where you can turn things up or down and there's reasons to do it at certain parts so let's get into it let's talk about the first destination where you can control volume which is at its source the drums tab if you select a drum i'll select the snare it gets outlined or highlighted, meaning you can now adjust its properties in the instruments list over here. We see the name of the snare. We see we can adjust its volume and tuning. So let me just turn it down. As you can see, we turn that down. I'll double click this value, hit zero for unity gain, turn it back up. So why is this important? Because I could just go to the mixer tab and turn the snare down or up here and get the same results. Okay, here's the less priority reason why to use volume knobs here on the drums tab one reason is is this could be a super low dynamic beat where barely any signals making it over to the mixer tab so i could turn these drums up so we get a healthier signal over here that's one way or the opposite of that is i could have chosen a specific library preset and drum groove that's maxed out in velocity and i might feel like it's too loud or i'm distorting here on the mixer tab and i could you know turn things down instead but more important than all of that, which is the reason for this section, really, is when you go to the mixer tab, if you remember, when you change presets, you get different mixer configurations. And in this case, Millennium Metal, I love the tone, but I don't have five individual tom tracks. I have a tom bus. It's a way of grouping channels into a single channel. So all my five toms are stuffed down this bus, but I only have one volume knob for all five of my drums. So there's the tom mics turned down. We can still hear them through the room mics. Here they are turned up. But if I just wanted to turn the rack toms up and the floor toms down as a hypothetical, I can't do that here on the mixer tab. So I could go to the drums tab, I could select my rack tom, turn it down, or I could shift select all the rack toms. Pro tip, and turn all three of these down at the same time and then select my floor toms and turn those up. That was a dramatic example just to prove the concept. So that's why this volume knob is so amazing on these individual drums because they help you break out of bus channels on your mixer tab. And that really opens up the doors on what preset you might select if you know you have that capability. Let's briefly talk about the mixer tab and how it receives the audio from the drums tab, which we just talked about. It passes it through the mixer tab and then hands it off at our third destination, which is the master fader. I'm gonna hit play on this fill right here. We can see all these individual meters. These are the signals that are coming from the drums tab. And all these individual meters we see here, they all sum up together into a single stereo audio file and go to your master fader. So step one of volume drums, step two of volume mixer tab, and then step three, the master fader. The master fader derives from all of these channels combining. Now, if we start having a typical mixing experience just by turning faders up and down, we might notice distortion or more importantly, see a red light on the master fader indicating that it's too loud and we're peaking like this. Now, 
when you see the problem there on the master fader, I would say you don't just take the master fader and turn it down to solve the problem. Maybe that'll work. Use your ears. But a peak on the master fader usually indicates that the volume is too loud before the master fader, in this case on the mixer tab. So let's say I turned all these faders up and down and I like that mix, but I'm peaking on the master fader. I would want to select all of these channels at the same time and turn them all down because I don't want to break my mix. I like how everything's mixed together. I just want to grab them all and turn them down. So let me select the kick drum. I'll hold shift and I'll select whatever my last channel is. And now I can turn them all down equally. Maintaining the mix I had just having acquired a volume. And now let's see if the master fader is still peaking. It is not. We found the library we wanted. We found the preset we wanted. We learned how the drums tab can manipulate the mixer tab and really assist us. And we also learned how to prevent from peaking at the master fader. So we really have a solid foundation under us to do some real creative stuff. So let's create our own kit and get you closer to getting your drum sound. Now we're back on the drums tab and we're going to customize our drum kit preset. I have the kick drum selected. We can see by the outline and I can right click on this kick drum. And here's a small list of all the kick drums. I can instantly swap in and out of this kit real fast, more elaborate than that. We have this kick drum selected. We see the outline. Now we can go up to the instrument list. We see that same list that we saw over here on the kick drum, except now we're in a preview list where we can click and hear different kick drums instantly. More important than that, if you remember my auditioning presets advice, you could play your beat and swap these kicks out instantly while you're listening. Very important, super time saver. Very cool. The reason why this list is so short is because these kick drums were actually recorded in the same room as this drum kit. So this is an optimized list. You're not limited to it, but this is the optimized list you might want to try to choose from because the ambience from these kick drums will match the rest of these drums from the Bright Room library that's not enough from you or you own a bunch of tune track products and you want to import a kick drum from a different product use this menu instead which is out of the scope of this video but it'll be pretty straightforward when you check it out but remember the ambiences from other products may not match the current product you're using now i'm going to select a bunch of different drums and create a full custom drum kit real quick but keep in mind that I might not do this at the beginning of a project. I might want to record the guitars, the bass, maybe get some vocals down and have a rough mix up before I invest this time into a custom kit because I don't know how these tones I'm choosing now are going to work with our mix later in post-production. So do it when you want. I typically do this later. All right, I have a drum beat with a fill. Let's just say this represents our whole song and I'm just going to hop right in. Select kick drum, audition kick drums. Slightly different pitch on this. I'm gonna use this one right here. Snare. This one has less decay to it. If I was playing at a faster tempo, this might be a good idea. Let's say I like ringiness today. This one has a really higher pitched ring and there's a tuning knob here as well. If I wanted the tuning of the entire snare to go up, maybe I'd turn it up. That's a drastic difference, but maybe split the difference. Let me just go plus one. I'm not a fan of it, but I'm just want to show you the usability. Symbols. Uh, 
there's not a China in this beat, but just to show an example of what I was talking about earlier about using volume knobs, all of the symbols all are joined together and grouped under this overhead bus. So I don't have a place where I can just turn up the China. So if this was a China riff, I could select the China and turn it up here on the drums tab and get it outside of that overhead group. So now that I've created a custom drum kit, I probably would have spent more time on it with the toms, doing the volumes, the tuning. Now I want to save this custom kit. I'll go to the presets menu, user presets, and save as. And what I save here under this user preset won't only save my work on the drums tab with all the custom drums, the custom volumes, and the tunings, but it'll also save all of your work you did on your mixer tab all in this custom preset. And now later, when I launch Easy Drummer 3, my work will not be lost. I'll just go to the presets menu, user presets, and here's my metal kit right there. So now you have your custom drum tone. And at this point, what I might do lastly is I might route out all of these mixer channels to my DAW so I can mix Easy Drummer in my DAW which I'm not going to get into this year because I have a ton of videos on them already, a bunch of separate videos for each individual DAW. So the links for those are down in the description. So I hope your workflow has become more elaborate after this video. And we can actually take it way further than this. I have a drums tab course at shootyschool.com. But if you learn just what's in this video, boy, you're going to have a rock solid foundation. I'm Sean from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for hundreds of free videos just like this, plus complete courses. Check out my Discord and Facebook support groups. Links are in the description. Thank you, TuneTrack. Let's rock on with Metal Month. I hope to see you next week.